Hello everyone, my name is Gabby and welcome to another episode of Dragon Ball Misconceptions. So this time we're, we're doing the big one. You know what it is. Honestly, next to the whole Gohan was supposed to be the main character, this is probably the rumor that is spread the most throughout the fandom even though there's really no evidence to it. That is that Toriyama intended for the series to end at either the Freezer arc or the Cell arc. It honestly depends on who was talking and what the rumor is. Obvious, let's just get it straight out of the way. No, there is no real evidence that he intended it for it to end that way. In all honesty, if you guys want to know the entire truth of every single possible rumor that you guys have had in your head for the past few years, if that you actually believe this stuff, I recommend you go to kanzentry.com and check out their intended ending guide. Honestly, they it is very very detailed and it can exp explain pretty much every single rumor that anyone has ever had about when or not the series was supposed to end. So I think you guys should probably check that out. It's a lot. It's quite long, honestly, and I feel like a lot of the information is not that interesting to put in a vlog. So there you go. If you guys want to know the truth, I'll give, put a link in the video description. I think the real way to put this rumor to rest is just for everyone to realize that no, Akira Toriyama did not have a plan of the series. He had no idea what direction the story was going to take. He hadn't planned that Goku was an alien, he hadn't planned who all the villains were going to be, and he didn't plan out when the series was going to end. With Margin, at the end of the Margin Buu saga, he's just, he just decided, you know what, sure, I think I'm done. That's it. I just don't want to, I'm just finished publishing it. It's very, I've been doing this for like 11 years. I don't want to do it anymore. And that was when he ended it. I think the problem is everyone was expecting, for a series that went on for so long, everyone was expecting this, you know, the ending to be a lot more finite, to, you know, draw together all of the loose ends. But let's be honest, I don't think Toriyama as a writer is very good at that sort of thing. He just sort of writes things on the fly and he wrote it every week. And it honestly, it worked very well for something that was a really strict update schedule that he had to come up with a chapter every single week for Weekly Shonen Jump. I mean, honestly, I feel like a lot of people would really be able to, would be able to come up with creative material given that kind of time limit, limitation. But he managed it, he managed pretty well, not perfectly, but he did pretty well. I think what I, what interests me the most isn't just the fact that this rumor got popular. It's more just why and how this rumor got popular. Because the fact of the matter is, if so many people believed that Frieza and Cell had were supposed to be the endings of the series, clearly they believed that the endings of those sagas were better than the actual ending that we ended up getting. They thought that those were more definitive endings. And I that just made me start thinking why. Why would people believe that those endings were better than the endings we actually got? And I think I've come up with an answer, a pretty simple answer, honestly. At the end of the Freezer arc and the end of the Cell arc, Goku is seemingly dead. Yeah, I know, that sounds a little bit morbid, doesn't it? But, it, I don't know, I was just thinking, if you guys have seen my previous misconception video, I mean, I don't know if you have, you might have, but in that, through some time, at some point in the middle, I talk about how Goku is basically the only character in existence, with the exception of maybe Vegeta, who can drive the plot of Dragon Ball. That is, you know, the plot about fighting progressively stronger guys. And I think at the end of the day, that just, all of that comes down to Goku, basically, it comes down to Goku's dream. If you've ever watched or read any other shonen, shonen anime or shonen manga, you may have been seeing um, Goku compared to other heroes such as Naruto or Monkey D. Luffy. And it's true that they take a lot of inspiration from Goku. And I think the, the biggest inspiration, I think, is basically the addition of a dream. Like a goal. Something that drives, something that drives the main character. Something that drives them to get stronger. Something that drives them to participate in the plot. Because that is beneficial to them. But if we, keep, if we keep going on this comparison, if you compare Goku to Naruto and Monkey D. Luffy, the interesting thing is those two, the later characters, Naruto and Luffy, they have dreams and goals that can actually be achieved. Naruto eventually becomes Hokage. Monkey D. Luffy is going to become King of the Pirates, 
or at the very least it's going to change the system from the inside so such a ti outdated title isn't going to exist anymore. But Goku? What's Goku's dream? What's Goku's goal? Well it's simple, to become stronger. And the great thing about this, and I don't know if Toriyama was intending for it, this to happen, but the great thing about Goku's goal is it can never be satisfied. No matter how long, as long as Goku is there, as long as Goku still has that desire to become stronger, there are going to be more people, more beings that are going to show up that are stronger than him. If there is any underlying theme to Dragon Ball, it's that no matter how good you are, there is always someone stronger than you. And I feel like um, Battle of Gods really exemplified this. Beerus showed up, Goku got a power up to beat him, and Goku still wasn't strong enough to win. And I, that's what I think I really love about Battle of Gods. This kind of theme pervades all of Dragon Ball. First, Goku becomes the strongest on Earth. So what are you going to do then? Well, it's simple. You should have people not from Earth. Then Goku becomes strongest in the universe. Well, what are you going to do then? Um, well, maybe... Oh, we can have an enemy who is basically made of Goku and all of his friends and all of his enemies here to fight. And after that you can have like a universe, universe level destruction and Goku becomes strongest in the known universe in general for like the last few million years. And now, in Battle of Gods, Goku is probably the strongest in the universe. So what do we do? We introduce more universes. And if they are hinting towards Super, in Dragon Ball Super, investigating those 12 universes, that will be great because it is a perfect way to just introduce stronger guys and that's just to keep the plot rolling. I know I went on a bit of a tangent there, but what I'm trying to say is, and what the theme of this video is I'm trying to explain is, as long as Goku is alive, Dragon Ball can always keep going. No matter how preposterous it seems, the series can always keep going. People can still get stronger. They can make people as strong as they need to. And that, I think, is honestly why I kind of like the Margin Boot, the ending that we ended up getting. Because it's not definitive, and it leaves Goku alive. And it's a really great way of just saying, and so the adventure continues. Sure, it ends up with, yeah, sure, Goku ends up finding Oob. And then he talks, says, I'm going to go and train Oob. But it more just feels like, it doesn't feel like the end of the series. It just feels like the end of the published manga. But the story can keep going. Of course, the story can go to GT. But maybe that's not canon anymore. Maybe it is. The story can keep going to Super. But either way, I think a continuation makes perfect sense. And I think that is also why people thought the Freezer and the Cell arcs were endings, were supposed to be the endings, because Goku was dead, because Goku wasn't in the plot anymore, and because because of the fact that Goku wasn't there, you could just definitively say, that's it, there's no more strong guys, no one is stronger, and that's the end of the story. So what I'm trying to say is, maybe it was a good thing that the manga ended up ending the way it did. Maybe it was a good thing that it wasn't definitive. Because it wasn't definitive, we can get continuations. The story can always continue. I mean, sure, it could continue off into GT, but maybe that's not canon anymore. And maybe the story is going to continue into Super. Sure, I'm putting a lot of hopes into Super, and if it does end up being bad, I will be thoroughly disappointed. But I think it's always great to be optimistic, and I am very, very hyped for the current new series. So if Dragon Ball Super does end up being great, just think about it. If the ending of the manga was really, really final, then you wouldn't have been getting this in the first place. At least, not likely. So, maybe it was a good thing that the ending wasn't the ending you wanted. Maybe. I don't know. It'll all depend on July. So that was my Dragon Ball misconceptions. Okay, to be honest, that had almost nothing to do with what the misconception was originally about. But I will be perfectly honest, Sitting around talking about facts and figures all day is not really my forte. I like just speculating and I feel like this, what the topic ended up becoming was a little bit more interesting than what it should be. And like I said, if you want hard facts and figures, go to the Khan Sentry site. They're great. So in the end, everything I'm talking about 
it's all going to depend on whether Dragon Ball Super was really worth having an open ending. Oh god, Dragon Ball Super, you have so much there on your shoulders. I hope, I just hope you will be worth it. If you are not, that will be very, very sad. And that's all I had to talk about. So, this is Gabby, and bye guys!